So in the case of an array, if we want to use it like a queue, simply we're adding things to the end and we're taking things off the front. So let's say we wanted to add some numbers to this. It would simply be just as easy as if I was typing it, right? So it would be like 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be like pushing four numbers onto the array. But the thing about using an array is that you could easily push off the end, but the problem is, is when you try to take things off the front or if you remove something from the head uh, of the array. So if you wanted to take this one and remove it, so effectively, if you're shifting, uh, it would basically give the value to you and then rem and then null it out. But now it has to actually take each one of these and effectively cut and paste each one, just like I'm doing, in order to make it shift down. And then you, it would end up setting the length of the array. This is how the array works, and it can be very slow. Obviously, in the case of sm this very small example, it's not going to be that big of a deal, but when you start to get into larger numbers, not even that much larger, if you start looping through and trying to essentially remove contents from array from the head, which would be from here, it would end up being reasonably slow comparatively to other methods. Now, let's say that this is actually the contents of a queue now instead of an array and actually behind the scenes a queue actually uses an array well how does it use the array in such a way that makes it better well the thing about a queue is that it already presizes or sets the capacity of the array to be large enough to handle at least some manageable amount of operations so let's say that for now we're just going to put like a dot for null okay so it's going to have let's say it has five elements in it and it's you've already added two, three, and four to that queue, and then it's basically just left these as placeholders. Well, how does an array dequeue uh, these uh, these elements? Well, what's actually happening is that it doesn't actually move the elements around. That's the major difference. What it does is, let's say if you wanted to remove the two and return it, well, what it's going to do is behind the scenes it actually has it actually has a pointer that says that this is the head of the array. So the queue recognizes that this is the head of the array, it's the beginning. In the case of the four, it's the tail. So it knows the beginning and it knows the end, but it keeps some open capacity. Now if I decide that I want to dequeue the beginning of the array, I'm adding things at the end and I'm taking things off the front, well, what ends up happening is it simply um, takes the contents and it returns the two, sets this to null, and then moves the head over. So now you have the head and the tail, and it knows uh, where it's at. Now, in reality, numerically speaking, uh, the tail is actually is actually over there. That's where uh, it recognizes the tail is at. So when there's no elements in the array, the head and the tail will actually line up. Um, but for visual representation, I, I'm going to uh, you know, put it like this. So we can see that there's the head, there's the tail. Now, if I wanted to add more, well, what happens? It simply inserts another value here and moves the tail. So I wanted to go over this because I found it quite interesting that that's the technique that a queue uses. I originally had made the assumption that it was simply analogous to a linked list. So on from here, I wanted to show you the actual code. So here's the code that represents the main methods of a queue, which is NQ and DQ. So what we have here is this is the portion of the algorithm that actually sizes the array to be larger if it needs to get bigger. So if you started with a default size of four, which is what this one in particular starts off as, it's going to grow by a certain factor. Basically, let's say you've reached the size. Like, let's say that you're getting to the point where you're maxed out, but you're trying to add something. It's going, hey, you're at your max. Um, let's make it bigger. And then so it upgrades the capacity of the array. This is done in a couple different ways. In other languages, you have to just simply make a copy of the array and replace it. Uh, in JavaScript, you can afford to do under certain circumstances, because of the nature of a queue, 
you can actually just extend the length. Now going back to our diagram, this gets really interesting because so sometimes what can happen with a queue is that you can actually loop all the way through and arrive from the head here, you can go to the other side and come back to here. And that's another way that a queue tries to manage handling the data instead of actually extending it further and further and further and then you're managing your capacity. So when this situation happens, you can't simply extend the array like you can in JavaScript because then you would end up having empty elements in between the head and the tail. So instead, you have to make a copy just like any other uh, language implementation for a queue does. And before you make your copy, you end up setting the length of the array and filling the contents in as if you were starting over but with more capacity after the tail. So I hope you found that informational. I thought it was really interesting because it was a different implementation of a collection that I hadn't really seen before, and I thought it was pretty smart uh, and pretty efficient. And hopefully it makes you think about next time if you're actually implementing an array and using shift and unshift.